Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. So after sorting out storage for my hand planes and chisels, I thought I'd better have a look at the hammers and mallets. Just like the other two things, I seem to have far more than I need, but I don't want to get rid of any. I lay them all out and determine how long the rack's going to need to be, and then I dig out a bit of scaffold board and clean up the edges with a hand plane, and now I've got them nicely to hand. My plan is to use this bit of scaffold board to make two end brackets, so I mark out the shape I want the bracket to be. I can then get the first one cut out on the bandsaw. Instead of marking out the second one in the same way, I'm just putting the first one on, marking out the first straight edge, and then I can get that bit cut on the mitre saw. I can get the first one then put back on, mark out where the rest of the cuts need to go, and get them made on the bandsaw. So I determined I wanted my rack to be a metre long, nice even number. So I'm marking out this bit of wood that's going to be on the back, and then I can set up a stop block and cut it down to length. My plan is for the hammers to sit over dowels, so first I trim off the ends because they're slightly rounded over, then I can get two dowels, which are actually broom handles because they're much cheaper, down to a metre as well. I get one of my larger hammers and position it in the centre of the bracket, then using a falsener bit that's the same size as the dowels, or broom handles, I mark out where the holes need to go. I can then fetch out and get set up my drill press. So on the first bracket, where I've made those marks, I can get those two holes drilled out. And I've got a scrap of scaffold board underneath so I get no blowout. With those holes drilled, I get the first one clamped onto the second one, and then I can get it taken back to the drill press. I'm not going to drill all the way through as I don't have enough room underneath for a sacrificial piece. So I'm just going to drill down, mark the start of the holes, then I can unclamp it, get it back on and finish off the holes. So this is the bit of wood that's going to go on the back. I'm just setting my blade to the height of this piece of wood and this is my flat toothed blade. Again, I've clamped both brackets together so I can make all the cuts at the same time. Now I'm cutting out a slot at the back of the brackets to accept that piece of wood. With all the bits cut, I now give them all a sand down. On the bandsaw, I set the fence to the diameter of the dowel. Then I can take a little scrap piece of walnut I have and rip it down to that thickness. I then mark out the centre line of the dowels and cut slots in them the thickness of the scaffold board. I do this on both ends of both pieces. I then take that little bit of walnut and just freehand I cut some wedges. I need four in total. One last job before assembly, just put a hole in either end of this piece of wood. Then we can start getting it put together. So the first thing I do is get some glue in this little cutout I made, then that metre long piece of wood can get slotted in place and screwed down. I then think it's a good idea to do exactly the same thing on the other end. That was a stupid thing to do. Let's take this back off.
we'll get these dowels in first. So now that I've worked out that the dowels need to go in before I get the other end on, I can get some glue into those holes, get the dowels in, and then I can take it down to the floor and gut the other end on. A little fiddly to get all three bits to line up, and it needed a little persuasion, but luckily all my hammers were on hand. With the dowels nice and flush either end, I can take the walnut wedges, get some glue on, and get them slid into the little slot I cut. Then I can just take a hammer and tap them into place. Got all four wedges in, I leave it for a few hours to dry. When it's dry, I take my Irwin pull saw, link to it on my tool page below if you don't have a pull saw because they're great for doing things like this. So I trim all four wedges flush and then I give everything another sand. I'm just going to use my new favourite method to attach everything to the wall at the moment and that is drill four holes along the back and then I can get some of these brass screw cups put into place. To finish it and give it some protection I get a couple of coats of Danish oil because with the hammers going in and out this is going to get a bit of abuse. When the oil had dried, I could get it on the wall. I decided to go in line with my chisel rack. So first I get a screw in, in one of the holes close to the centre. I can then pivot it on that screw, tapping the end to get the bubble in the centre, and then I can get the rest of the screws in. And that's it all done. Now just to get all the hammers and mallets put away. really starting to feel the workshops getting organized now and it's so nice that when you need a tool it's just on the wall and you can grab it so thanks for watching thanks to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos